Hi, Tyler Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete and today we are on a new project of mine. So this is kind of how the project looked like when we arrived on site first day and this is what we transformed it to. So it was quite the transformation. We did a, a little bit of everything on this one. Uh, we did the barbecue island, the fire pit, the pool coping, the pool tile. Uh, a lot of turf work here, concrete work, and uh, yeah, just a little bit of everything. The previous contractors left some open trenches, and it worked out pretty nice because we were able to utilize those trenches for our uh, low-voltage lighting and our 3-inch drain pipes. Now we're just stripping off the forms from the pool that just got shotcreted. Uh, the shotcrete guys left those behind, so we're just stripping them. And then we can go ahead and start backfilling all the native soil and kind of compacting it getting it ready for the road base you can see there uh, the guys who ran the p e also ran the gas lines for us for the barbecue island and the fire pit so we didn't have to run any gas lines which was nice all right guys just want to give you a quick update we uh we got our electrical in for the lights. We're gonna be doing some lighting on that bench over there. We're also installing our three inch drain lines for the concrete and the turf. We're gonna have a drain tie into these downspouts. And then we're gonna have a drain in the fire pit that's gonna go right there. And just a couple drains through here. And then uh, this right here is where the barbecue island will be. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go run, do a trash run while these boys start uh, forming the pool coping that we're gonna be doing, the port in place pool coping. There's my trailer, brand new. Got a full load in it too, full trash load. So I'm gonna haul this while my guys stay here and uh, get that pool coping done. Let's do it. So as I ran to the dump to dump the trash load, my guys had set up some rafters here at the deep end of the pool. And that's just so we can access the, the face of the pool coping when we pour concrete. We'll be able to strip those forms and finish, finish the face really nice. Here's a form we're setting for the foundation of the barbecue island, and that's the mud mixer right there. That's the mud mixer in action. Uh, it's a nice little unit, save you guys some mixing. You just crack the bags in the top and it pours out the chute. Pretty cool tool, so if you guys want to check them out, uh, feel free to do so. It's a add mud mixer. We're going to be facing this barbecue island with some nice veneer stack stone. It's a uh, black ice by MSI.
uh, when installing those gas fittings there all you need is some of that yellow Teflon and some gas pipe sealant and uh, we were able to hook up all those little fittings this barbecue island is gonna have a poured in place concrete countertop just regular gay concrete but we did a cool finish on this because we hit it with a sponge and it gave it a really nice uh, sand wash finish You can see we just formed for the access door right here. It's a double door. And when you form these box outs, you just lay the spec mix right on top of the form, lay your block, and then you tie a rebar in that ties everything in and solid grout it. And then when you pull these forms out, it'll stay locked in just how it is, and you can put all your appliances in there. Here's the finished setup product for the concrete countertop we're going to be pouring for this barbecue island here. We got rebar dowels coming up out of the block and we're tying those into the rebar grid here. Uh, we did about 10 inches on center. And this is what it should look like right before you pour your concrete countertops. We also poured a little concrete slab at the bottom of this barbecue island with a little drain just in case any water gets in there it'll drain out into our drainage system. Alright guys we're setting up everything getting ready for concrete tomorrow. It's actually my uh, my birthday today and we got the main man Matt here. Yeah we got the pizza. pizza yes and sir. Gatorade. He brought us pizza man let's go check it out. We got some Domino's here. He got the ice cold Gatorades for us, man. We don't mess around around here, man. Hey, that's awesome, man. Yep. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate happy, that. Happy birthday, dude. Thank you, man. So yeah, we're just gonna enjoy some pizza now, guys, and uh, you know, just get set up for uh, get set up for concrete. We got concrete coming tomorrow at uh, 7 a.m. So I think Matt's gonna be here for that, right? I'll be here. Yep. yep. And your brother? Yeah, my, my brother's yep. gonna be here. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun day. We'll get a lot of good content for you guys and uh, keep it going. See this thing come together. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, usually the, the mesh is more of uh, like a really slim coat with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a lot of water. A lot of bleed water. Uh-oh. 
So that's my main man, Matthew. He's a stud, and he brought that uh, pizza and Gatorades for me. It was actually my birthday that day, so it was kind of cool. Really appreciate that. It was very nice of him. He didn't have to do that, but, you know, it's nice. It's always fun working with him. Uh, if I didn't mention this, this is a project, and uh, I'm just he just subbed me in to do all the uh, hardscape here, basically. Anyways, we're pouring out these uh, caps now for the fire pit. We're also pouring the barbecue countertop at the same time. And those two are going to have the same exact finish. We're also going to be smooth stuccoing this wall. And this is just the brown coat. <laughs> yeah. So the mix we got going on for the brown coat for the wall, we're doing about one shovel of uh, Type S lime. To about two bags of spec mix. <laughs> I, got, I got competition now. <laughs> Come on, Enrique. Check it out, dude. Yeah. Looks good, huh? Alright guys, so today we're going to be stripping the forms on this barbecue island and we're going to be installing the, the stone. So uh, here's a little sample that's called black eyes. It's a natural stone and we're going to be putting this on the front of the barbecue island, something like that. Uh, we're also going to work on a couple more forms today. Uh, the homeowner and I have decided on putting a curb right here because the elevation of the neighbor's property is a bit higher so i don't know you just don't want dirt you know coming in if it's a rainy day or something and having all that dirt flood over to your side so we're gonna run a curb all the way along this side of the house as well as over there
Now it is pour day. We're pouring this concrete out at 3500 PSI. It's a pea gravel mix with no fly ash and we told the concrete company to add buckeye in the load so uh, buckeye is just another word for fiber mesh. It's those little fiber strands that hold the concrete together. And we did that because we didn't put any rebar in the coping as you guys could tell. So we didn't put any rebar in this coping because a lot of people think that uh, you know when you're using metal rebar around a lot of water it'll eventually rust and then expand and then that metal will explode the top layer of the concrete right off and it'll cause cracking in the future uh, the general didn't want it so we just added fiber mesh if it was my job personally I'd recommend a fiberglass rebar because then you don't have to worry about it rusting and it'll still hold all that coping together real nice That was the four foot long walking cutter in action. So we always run our cutters along the joints where we want them before we run the walking joiner. And that's just because those cutters will cut it nice and straight every single time. And it'll cut it at a certain depth, the whatever depth we need to make it an effective crack control joint. In this case, we're pouring a four inch slab, so those cutters are about an inch deep. You want them to be about a quarter of the depth of the slab to make an effective crack control joint. But now I'm out there sliding it on the knee boards. The guys are stripping the coping and facing it. And uh, this is almost ready for the, the world special 50% horsehair, 50% nylon concrete broom.
Now I'm installing the autofill and skimmer lid. These are a little different than uh, what you're typically used to seeing with regular autofill and skimmer lids because they're usually like the white plastic caps. But in this case, we got a little, they're a little more expensive, but they're a little nicer because you can kind of blend them in to whatever material you're using around the pool deck. So for example, this is all gonna be turf. And what we're going to do is just stick a little piece of turf into each skimmer lid and autofill lid. And it completely covers it and hides it. So you'll see a little more of that later. But right now we're adding about two inches of sand for this turf. And you always want to make sure you put at least an inch or two inches of sand down before you put your turf. Otherwise, you know, the, the homeowner and, you know, their kids or whatever are gonna feel those big rocks from the class two road base. So with sand, it's a real nice smooth, you can walk on it barefoot, no problem. The last thing you would want, and especially around the pool deck, is for the customer to be walking around here barefooted or something, jumping in and out of the pool, and then a big rock impels them through the bottom of the turf. That's never any fun. But the only thing left to do here now is to tuck all of our edges, uh, blend in the seams together real nice so you don't notice it, and then add our infill and power broom it all. I'm also going to be adding the exotic fire pit glass in the fire pit today. It's a black glass, and that's the cherry on top for the fire pit. While my turf guys are finishing up this turf here, I have my regular crew uh, laying down the stone around the spa, the black guy stack stone, and they're also doing the water line tile around the pool. That's a wrap on the turf work and the very last thing for me and my crew to do here is to install this artificial wooden Azek bench. It's a composite decking material and underneath this bench we're going to be installing some low voltage lighting, some strip lights. We also poured this curb in another video a couple months back. You guys can check that out. I'll link it down in the description below. That was a fun pour, to say the least. And what we did was we just tap conned some pressure treated 2x4 to the bottom of this curb. Tap conned it in. And then we were able to use some, you know, composite decking screws to drill through the Azek wood into the pressure treated 2x4. And then we just plugged the holes we made with the screws with some caps. Now we're just doing a little bit of cleanup here. This is where the pool equipment will be. I believe they're gonna do a little privacy fence around that area just to block it off. But yeah, this is the final day, so we're just making sure everything's nice and tidy, nice and clean. 
we can get on out of here and roll to the next one but it turned out really nice the general was very happy with it the homeowners were really happy with it and yeah let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comment section below and here we go so we did this barbecue island right here with a black ice stone by msi and uh, let me show you what we got in here so we got our gas line we got an outlet in here and then we have low voltage lighting this is for the lighting that goes underneath the bench that i'll be showing you here in a second and then we also put a drain in here because you know you, sometimes water builds up in these uh barbecue islands and it's just better to have a drain in there than to not right here we have our trash can pull out and right here we got our mini fridge and that outlet that i just showed you in there hooks up to all this stuff to get it going and of course we got our our grill we did a light sponge finish on this so there's a little bit of texture on it similar to a sand wash finish just not as drastic the port in place countertop came out really nicely i'm very happy with that and then we did a little concrete patio here for them one drain in the middle just to make sure there's no puddling anywhere and this is what the barbecue island looks like so that's a real masterpiece really beautiful hopefully we got more of those coming on the way and then over here we did concrete stepping stones throughout the backyard all the way to the end uh turf bands uh eight inch turf bands right here and turf all the way throughout here so we did a same stone the black ice msi stone on the fire pit uh same finish on the concrete countertop here and we did a black ice uh decorative glass for the fire pit as well we have an h burner in there and here's our gas valve so you could turn this to turn the gas on and uh you know have a nice night out here with your family or whatever we stuccoed this silver gray by la habra stucco colors uh, smooth Santa Barbara finish uh, came out really nice really smooth so I was happy with that we also did the uh, port in place coping here uh, for the port in place coping we actually just did a broom finish but it came out really nicely as you guys can see and then uh, we also wrapped the spa in the same stone we did the barbecue island and the fire pit so as I was saying we did this English walnut bench it's a uh, artificial wood Azek and we did low voltage lighting uh, there's about four of them in there they just shine down looks really nice at nighttime the bench itself looks really nice as well i'm really happy about how this turned out in particular it looks really good but really i'm happy about how the whole job turned out it looks really nice as you guys can see something cool here i wanted to point out is usually with skimmer lids you'll just keep them to the top and they'll just be obviously noticeable but what we got here instead is a skimmer lid that hides the skimmer in the autofill so what you do is you have these two tools it's kind of hard to do it with one hand because i'm filming but um you put one in this slot and then you put one in this slot maybe i can show you guys and then you just pull this up and there's your skimmer so yeah and it looks really nice and to put it back in you just repeat the same steps you just did and boom you're done thank you guys so much for watching this video let me know what you guys thought about this awesome transformation i really appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you guys on the next one bye